to the organizer. I'm happy to be here. I'll also be here in March, so it switched me to talk. So let me write the title, which is not the one uh, advertised on the schedule. So the title is Motion uh, Measure of a Complex Body. Controls its maximal radius. Don't worry, in five minutes you will understand the title better. And before starting anything, I want to give you what's then just uh, two or three notations that I'll be using. So phi is the half function. It's the Gaussian measure of uh, this interval. Okay. And psi is two five minus one. Will you uh, elaborate it? What else? Uh, I'll use notion of n lattices. What is the n lattice? It's a linear image of Zn of some t. Um, what other notations do I need? Okay, convex Now denote can a set of convex bodies in n. And the zero n convex body which contains zero in the interior. And uh, I'll use uh, self as notation, uh, which is so V and K in in zero, so some convex body containing zero in its interior. Uh, I'll be not uh, you know the V norm, which is only a norm if it's symmetric. Uh, this okay, that will make my life more simple. Uh, okay, so no. <laughs> uh, I will start by uh, recalling some vector balancing notions and inequalities. No, so, so here k is v, v is k, yes. V oh, is yeah. k. Thank you. <laughs> here k is the same letter for the point. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, so uh, we'll play a game together. I start by giving you uh, n vectors in the unit goal of our n, and uh, your goal is to find signs so as to minimize uh, the norm, the L2 norm, of this sign. So you're trying to minimize over uh, signs that's normal. If you don't have any better idea how to start, you may try to choose epsilon at random. Well, so you know you can have a longer chalk. But this is going to be noisy. So, so I'll take my epsilon to be plus one probability one half, my minus one probability one half, all independently. And how does this uh, non negative variable behave? So you extend the start, start product. And you get this. But the UI were in the unit volume, so this is at most n. Well, if the average is at most n, it means definitely there exists some epsilon such that the square norm is at most n. So we know that the minimal norm is going to be at most n. And this is true for any uh, sequence. Length of n vectors from the ball. Mm -hmm. And I have equality here. Why? Because if you take an orthonormal basis, no matter how you choose the signs, this is what is perfect. Okay, and more generally, if I give you two convex bodies which contain zero in their interior, uh, one defines the balancing constant between you and me to be. Uh, the maximum over all sequences of length n in u of the minimal norm, one can achieve the minimum. 
or the best choice. You want to make assign some. Uh, you want to balance the sum with respect to the problem. Okay. So we have just seen that beta v2 v2 is uh, it's an even uh, easier exercise to check that beta uh, v1 v1 is n. And now I'll give you uh, a few inequalities. So how about the infinity the infinity the cube? Well, this is at most point ten. This is due to Tensor and independent Poiskin in the 80s. Um, if, we, if we try to balance vectors from the L1 ball with respect to the infinity norm, one can always get something of norm less than 2. This results from the uh, Okay, just one more example. This is of order n, and in certain dimension it's going to be equal to n. And uh, conjecture, how about instead of uh, minimizing the L2 norm here, I'm trying to minimize the infinite norm. So the conjecture is that this should be constant, independent of n. This is called uh, a Walsh conjecture. And it's still open. The best uh, upper bound, which is known, is due to um, the shape. And uh, the way he does it is we're saying that if the convex body has Gaussian measure at least a half, then it's balancing constant with respect to the L2. Well, is going to be at most a constant. And so this will be good from Okay. And now I'm going to state another conjecture. So, excuse me, I'm going to use a notation I haven't introduced yet, but I'll introduce it in the next 60 seconds. So it's some, not with beta, it's with uh, something else called alpha. And alpha is always less than beta, so this implies this. That's why it's a weaker conjecture. Okay, so now I have to explain you a little bit. Um, so first, I give some analysis. Some convex body, and what is the covering radius of uh, my lattice with respect to the convex body? Well, there's some lattice, there's some convex body. It's like copies of the convex body uh, centered at the point of the lattice. Maybe it's not covering the entire space, but if you um, maybe if you multiply uh, v by two. Now you're covering the entire space. So mu is the least uh, validation factor such that uh, this is covering the entire space. Okay. Um, great. For instance, um, if you take uh, the end for lattice and the LP ball, you get uh, what is the last point you will touch? It's the one half, one half uh, point, which LP norm is this. Uh, so, definition alpha. So, given two convex body UV containing zero in your interior, alpha is Defined as the maximal covering radius of L with respect to V among all lattices such that um, U contains N linear independent vectors of L. Okay, we're not. Well, uh, 
how it pivoted to Banashi. Um, alpha is always less than beta. Next, um, the theorem due to uh, Banashik and Janek uh, some uh, 25 more or less years ago is the following. If V is some convex body such that a Gaussian measure is at least a half, then alpha B2 is going to be less than a constant. And what is the constant? Is this? Let's see, like here. And this is sharp uh, in any dimension, like a horizontal symmetric strip uh, of width exactly this. This Gaussian measure is going to be P, and the covering radius with respect to Zn is going to be. Uh, <laughs> okay. So this is sharp in the just take a strip. Um okay. And they were very nice. They left a conjecture for us to think about cannot take too much of that. The following, um, they claim that there should exist some function independent of the dimension, uh, increasing such that the dimension for any convex body containing zero in its interior, um, beta of, of, of P2 and V. Uh, uh, is uh, controlled only with the Gaussian measure of So for any convex body of Gaussian measure at least P, beta of B2 and V should be at most uh, F of P. So it implies a similar conjecture, uh, which is the same statement but for alpha. It implies it because alpha is less than beta, right? And so uh, that's the theorem I wanted uh, to present today. And I feel very bad now because. This is John Ford, his figure. Uh, So F alpha exists. Uh, so F alpha P to be one over two minus one P of P less than half. And we'll just take a constant for P greater than half. We can do better than constant, but it's not sharp. This one is sharp for the same reason as before. You take the slab uh, and any dimension for any convex body such that this Gaussian measure is P. Okay. Alpha of V is the most of You may wonder if this conjecture is true, uh, does it give you anything regarding the cube? Uh, perhaps, but certainly not in the range uh, 0, 1 half. What is this? So assume f beta exists. Um, for any v uh, of Gaussian measure at least p, the definition is what is greater than this, which is greater than alpha. So 
So I can take V to be a, a symmetric slab of uh, P, and then um, this is equal to. Okay, and so if you take uh, for a fixed n the infimum over P, One half is not helping you for those of you who uh, care more about the two. Okay, uh, so for the remaining time, I wish to tell you ideas of the proof of this theory. Um, to do the same thing as in the vanishing charic paper. But we had the problem because one half was like central in the proof, so we had to get rid of it. So we want to prove that if uh, V has sufficient motion measure, then it's alpha with V2 is small. We prove the contraposite statement. So uh, if alpha of Whose V is uh, greater than one, we want to prove that the Gaussian measure is strictly less than one, which is the same statement uh, is P. So, first, let me convince you of the one dimensional case. So, one dimensional, I have uh, C times the ball, uh, some convex body, so segments. This is more than one. What does it mean? Maybe you forgot the definition of alpha. This means that um, there exists a one that is, and there exists a point such that V does not meet uh, the coset. What is the coset? It's just a uh, is to accept like this. Okay. So V is convex, it doesn't meet this set. So V has to lie between two consecutive points, and so its Euclidean length is going to be less than lambda, so less than C. Um, so this is equivalent with V having length um, strictly less than C. Okay. And if V has length less than 2 and less than P, by definition of C, of C, this is equal to um, the minimal length of some segment of uh, measure P. So if the length is less than this, it means that the Gaussian measure of V is less than oh. So we get the statement in dimension 1. Uh, and now I'd like to give you uh, an idea of how to do the induction to pass to higher dimensions. So we start the same way, uh, we'll prove this uh, composite statement. So assume alpha uh, is more than 1 for some v, and we want to prove that gamma n of v is less than v. What does it mean that alpha is greater than 1? It means there exists an n that is, and there exists a point in the space such that x plus l does 
not easy. And moreover, um, there exists um, a basis, a basis of Orient contents and this intersection. So there exists U1, uh, U1. Now I'll rotate uh, or end so that the first and minus one correspond will span uh, you know, So up to rotating the picture, we assume uh, that the intersection of this lattice with R n minus one is a n minus one dimensional lattice. So I have some uh, V here with some offset at Brazil. And V doesn't meet the process. Okay. So how uh, we deal with this, uh, we do some error uh, symmetrization. So here, okay, everything is R2 on the blackboard, but this is the last coordinate, and these are the first n minus one coordinates. <clears throat> and now we want something in R2. And so for any given height uh, y, you have a section here, uh, n minus one dimensional section. We replace it with a semi infinite half line, which has the same Gaussian measure. And we end up with some uh, planar convex set W. So let me just write the definition of W. Why the next one? Y is the projection of the section, and so we want this this thing, and that will be the of the Y. So by definition of W, uh, it has the same measure as the initial set. So what we need to prove is that this has measurelessly. But here we have a V that doesn't meet the coset. So if I look at this uh, section, well, the section doesn't meet my L prime lattice. So I'll rewrite X as X prime Xn. And uh, if you take the intersection at height xn, you get that um, x prime plus l prime. The xn uh, is empty. And now you use induction because this is uh, n minus one that is uh, which satisfies uh, this condition. Therefore. Um, this tells you that uh, alpha v to n vxn, I mean, cp v to n minus 1 vxn is greater than 1 strictly, and hence uh, that gamma n minus 1 of this section is strictly dominant. So cxn is less than. Okay, so I have this. And I have um, So here we know that this has measure less than P, which tells you that um, if this is the vertical length x equal minus 1 of P, uh, then you have to stop 
before the, this vertical line. Um, but, you know, the coset x plus l is also equal to the coset y plus l for any y in the coset. It's the same set. So what we have concluded for xn, it would hold for xn, but for uh, some other guys too. And these guys are, are uh, one lattice. So I have xn, maybe this is xn minus lambda. And every time you have to stop um, before, uh, before this vertical line. And therefore, uh, because w is convex, you conclude that the intersection of w with this vertical line has Euclidean um, strictly length, strictly less than c. Okay, and uh, now we needed uh, some tool. <coughs> Let W be a cross convex set, um, which is bounded on the right, meaning it will eventually have. Uh, empty intersection with the <coughs> lines if you go far enough on the right, like this W, uh, such that the uh, conclusion is that uh, the Gaussian measure of W is strictly less than P. And so this lemma finishes the proof. So for p equals uh, one half, this lemma uh, is like a corollary of the lemma they use in the paper from 97. But for p uh, less than a half, this is new. And by the way, this is not true if p is greater than half. So this is a phase transition. If I have a planar convex set meeting a vertical line along a certain intersection, I can always um, make it contain in some cone, so that the intersection has exactly the same length. So the lemma reduces to proving the same statement, but for cones. And um, you can always uh, assume the cone is symmetric with respect to the x-axis, because if you take all the vertical segments down, it can only uh, increase the mean. Uh, so you're reduced to one parameter problem, because you have fixed intersection with a given line, you have a symmetric cone, so you only have one parameter left, and so we'll call m of theta the measure of this uh, thing. So this is fixed, it's uh, so when theta approaches uh, p over 2, you approach uh, this half line. When theta approaches 0, you uh, approach the symmetric slab, uh, which has major p. And uh, m of, of theta looks like this. So, um, so it's strictly less than p when p over between uh, zero and p over two. But this is for p less than half. Uh, it's also for p for the half with a zero derivative at zero. Um, then there is an intermediate regime where it's like this, and when p gets close to one, it's like the opposite, meaning we're always above p. Um, We're above p, but there's 
a given maximum, and using this maximum, you know, you can uh, refine the constant to p minus one of one over two there by something which will uh, go to zero when p goes to one, but uh, probably it's not sharp. So we just give the statement. I think. Uh, that's okay.